always want to try this. I'm in this asshole's pussy palace. I like a little danger. I really have to go to the little ladies' room. You're not going anywhere. I have it within my power to level nation. People have been in this sport for such a long time, and they've been put in the work. Like Kevin has been, um, he's been fighting for 15 plus years. He has 60 plus fights, and this is so awesome for Bellator to put on uh, kickboxing for such a huge, you know, huge stage. But I, I personally think it should have been live. This show should have been live. These people, like, you know Kevin Ross, you know Joe Schilling, you know these people. Let's get, let's get the kickboxing out front because Muay Thai out front, it's worldwide. Let's get it out front. It's a whole different crowd than the MMA crowd. How, how does all that extra stuff in your life, like American Gladiator and video games, like apparently a movie appearance, how, how does that figure into your overall game? They were watching me fight and they saw me and they supported me and they, they had standing ovations at my first three MMA fights and you know most of my, my Muay Thai fights too, so I'm upset here because the fans getting in there and like, you know, figuring it out that way. You're watching a lot of tape and how many things you watch in preparation? There really is not a lot of things out there for me to watch, you know. I'm not trying to step on any of the guys that are working hard to get where they're getting, you know. Because I respect those guys, and um, when I look up to them, I want the rest of the world to look up to them. And, um, so maybe we should. That'd be cool. Are you, did you say you would have been uh, extreme work to train for this guy, or did you venture out to train with any other, maybe, like Greg Jackson or AK? Um, I trained with uh, a couple different people. My boxing coach, Chris Ben Top Shabazi, he's a UNLV boxing coach, and uh, he's a stickler, man. He loves up this way. I'm still going to get back in the gym and see what else I can improve, you know. Gina, the last uh, CBS show didn't have that good of ratings. Um, does that add any pressure to you as a fighter? You and Kimbo are... are... You know, you see those old-time fighters who are still fighting, and like, oh, he used to be great, you know? I wish I wish our coach would respect people as human beings a little bit more instead of just objects. Because I'm not interested in being a, an idea. So I've got my own ideas for myself, and however I love to those, then I'm cool. I'm not trying to be anybody else's idea. Do you know the. I think people look at her and don't think she's a fighter because of her perfect face and that kind of goes to her advantage because then they think she's not as good and then she just kicks their butts. I've been like seriously laughed at <laughs> to the point where they just look at me up and down like Psh, and like laughing at you in front of crowds and I just like stood there and that is probably the worst idea to do with me I realized because <laughs> I've never punched somebody so hard in, their, in my life. In the end, though, she's got to win, and she's got to look good. If she doesn't win her fights, it doesn't matter how good she looks. And if she doesn't win her fights, she's probably not going to look good for that long. I got an elbow, took an elbow to the cheek right here, and my whole eye just, like, like exploded up. And I was just like, damn, this is not sexy. When Gina came in, she's a little bit overweight. She came up, and he was like, ooh, baby, you fat. <laughs> and I was like, a little Thai man just called me fat, and I need to do something about that. Stop working. The more she training, the more I see in her eyes that she a next world champion in no time. What's up? This is Gina Carano, and you're watching FightCoverage.com. And, and people see you now; they recognize you. Have you been discouraged? Have you ever been discouraged to to continue fighting and maybe pursue a television career? 
um, to discourage fighting. And By anybody. Has anybody said, you know what, maybe you should stop fighting? And, and, and Every day of my life, man. <laughs> I mean, jeez. Uh, I, I fight because I love it and it keeps me in line. Um, and it's just what I want to do right now. And I know that might be mind-boggling to people um, that are looking forward to like doing you know acting and everything. But you know maybe maybe that'll be in my future. Maybe not. I just I just gotta stay true to my heart right now. The fighters are born, aren't they? They're born, baby. They're born. <laughs> Twenty year old. Chris, uh, whenever you're ready. And we should also shine the light on these kickboxers and the Muay Thai people because I get M MMA puts it all together and it's, it's become its own animal. But there's this underground thing, kind of like when kick, like when like snowboarding and like, you know, like, that's my little sister. <laughs> kind of like when snowboarding and like uh, um, skateboarding. Like, this is where kickboxing's at. You have some huge like stars who have never been paid what they're worth, who have put in the time, who have put in their life, and you you need to hear their stories because nowadays everybody comes and they're like, oh, I can make millions of dollars doing this stuff. These kickboxers, these Muay Thai people, it's never been a thing of money. It's been a thing of lifestyle. <laughs> This totes reminds me of. Williamsburg. And support them. And you, fans, have all the control. You don't know how much you can give these people the lives that they want. And you want to support the right people, or you want to support people that are like, money, money, strippers, bitches, whatever. Or you want to support people that are like, I'm here to make a dis difference. I'm here to support people. I'm, I'm here to love a community. Anything else? <laughs>